Do you find that self-esteem can be an absolute nightmare? It can be an absolute curse and kind of bring you down and when you've got really low self-esteem, you feel horrendous. Oh, I've certainly been there. But today, we're going to go through five powerful tips to boost your self-esteem. I used to say things to myself like, shut up, Johnny, and you're rubbish. But now, when I find myself saying those things, I pick myself out for it and say, don't speak to yourself like that because you wouldn't talk to someone else like that. So these five powerful tips will help you overcome the particular self-esteem challenges you might be facing. Of course, for any more self-esteem tips or confidence tips or personal growth tips, just subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button now. Okay, so I've got a new self-esteem book coming out. Yep, I'm writing another book. I love writing. And that's what makes me feel good, so I do it. And I'll go on to that in a minute. But I talk about how self-esteem is a muscle, because it is. Some of us think, oh, we've got low self-esteem, and that's it. That is not the case. <laughs> You're not going to get better self-esteem if you think like that. Self-esteem is a muscle, and I realised it. You just have to keep working on it continuously. Think about it. You go to the gym and you work on your arms. And then you'll probably get bigger arms. But if you don't work on your legs, you're not going to get bigger legs. You're not going to get stronger. So when you work on particular muscles, they get stronger. And self-esteem, you've got to treat like a muscle. So I got to a really low point where I was feeling really down about myself and rubbish and not appreciating who I was. And that's the turning point for me that went... I'm going to work on my self-esteem. So I started looking up all this research, looking at all my personal development and really searching out the answers. And again, if your brain looks for the answer, it will get the right answer it's looking for. So a question like, why am I so worthless? You're going to find negative answers. But I started looking for how can I improve my self-esteem? And I started getting lots of positive answers. And then even more importantly, started applying actions, which I'm going to go into with you today. First of all, what is self-esteem? Now, there's self-esteem, there's confidence, you hear self-acceptance, worth, and self-concept, and they're all different. Confidence is about how you feel about a given area of your life. So you might be confident in playing football, or you might be confident in singing. You might be not confident in singing, confident in playing football, which is me. Esteem is, first of all, there's your acceptance and worth. This is how you feel about yourself now how you are as a person right now, regardless of what you've achieved and anything like that, just who you are as a person. And I've always struggled with that, accepting the now. But the concept is what you think you're capable of, what your qualities are, what your value is to this world. And I've always been reasonably good with that in thinking I'm going to be great. But I've always looked so much into the future that I've neglected the present me now. So tip number one, goal planning. Why is goal planning important? Goal planning is important because it gives you a feel for your purpose, what you're on this planet for, what's valuable about you. When you start working towards something, you feel great when you genuinely love it. And make sure it's not something that, oh, it's going to make me lots of money, people are going to notice me, because I've been in that trap before. And if you go that approach, you're, one, probably not going to stick with it, and two, you're just saying that money and more people following you is going to make you feel better. And that's looking for external validation outside yourself. When you find something that you genuinely love and you think it's going to give value to the world because you love it and you feel you can give, that's going to make you feel so much better. So my recommendation would be find something you truly want to do if you don't know already. And then a second point to this. So it's not tip number two, but second tip within the first point, if that makes sense. Um is make sure you regularly, perhaps every week, review how you're getting on with your goals. Really make time for goal setting. And that's what I do every week. Tip number two, journal what was good and what was bad about your day. So, I mean, things that make you feel good, things that make you not feel so good. That's going to increase your self-awareness. And self-awareness is key to self-esteem because when you understand yourself better, you're able to take more actions consistent with what feeds your self-esteem. So, for example, feeling good for me is fasting in the morning, 
you don't have to do this, it's going to be different for you, is going for a run, is sitting in silence by myself every day, doing a bit of journaling, doing some writing. These are things that make me feel good, so I've got to try and do more of those. Things that make me feel bad are eating too much sugar or looking at social media too long. And these might be the same, might be different for you. But just take time every day to journal what makes you feel good and bad and try and reduce the bad things and make the good things more regular into your routine. Tip number three, it kind of links to what I said, but it's separate. It's eating good and exercising. Now, I'm not saying you need to do a marathon a day and you need to eat clean, clean vegan. You don't have to eat clean vegan if you're not vegan like me. You don't have to eat clean all the time. I'm saying that you're allowed treats, but when you look after your body, you're also looking after your mind and your self-caring and therefore you're feeding your self-esteem. So let me tell you a story. I was in Greece in the summer and it was a great, great, beautiful place, all the islands we were going to, but I was out drinking most nights and drinking quite heavily. And then I felt horrible, I felt really upset, felt really down the next days. And this is the come down from alcohol, but I'm not self-caring for my body. I wasn't self-caring for my body. Therefore, I was doing things that weren't consistent with feeding my self-esteem. So hopefully that message can help you understand that by giving yourself the exercise, giving yourself good foods, you're self-caring and therefore feeding the self-esteem. There are people out there who say, oh, I feel rubbish, feel horrible, but they're doing, they're eating things or not exercising to make them feel good. And you can't expect to feel better without caring for yourself first. And this doesn't just include eating and drinking, it's the information you take in. If you're taking in constant rubbish, you're not gonna feel good. So that's tip number three. Really look at what you're eating and drinking and, and your exercise regularly. Because when you start self-caring, that is feeding your self-esteem. Tip number four, and this is a bit of a crazy one, but hey, I'm crazy. Talking positively to yourself in the mirror every day. And it only has to be one minute. You don't have to do it too long, but just saying nice things to yourself. I'll say nice things to myself, such as I accept and love who I am right now, because like I touched on the self-acceptance and worth is something I struggled with because I've always wanted more and more and pushing myself, which is good ambition, but I need to work at accepting myself a bit more and my worth where I am right now. But if you keep doing this regularly, your brain starts to understand and starts to think, oh, I need to think positively. And your brain doesn't always know the difference between fake and reality. So therefore, if you're regularly talking to yourself positively, it's eventually going to sink in and you're going to start feeling good about yourself. So that's tip number four. And tip number five, I actually touched on this in a previous video, but I'm going to say it again because it links to self-esteem. Being alone with yourself in silence. I'm either talking, sitting alone with yourself for 10, 20 minutes in a room, just processing your thoughts, or going for a walk or run every day for 20 minutes. And no, you can't have headphones, you can't have podcasts, you can't have music. Those things are great for you, but they're not allowing you to be alone with your thoughts. Because when you're listening to music, your mind's elsewhere enjoying the music. When you're listening to podcasts, it's processing information. So I'm talking about just being alone with your thoughts. I've been doing this so regularly, at least 20 minutes a day. Well, usually half an hour, 40 minutes in total, because I'll do a run and then run or walk, and then I'll be doing 10 minutes of sitting alone with myself, processing my thought. It allows you to understand yourself more. And when you can understand your problems and what you're thinking, you're able to work through them and think about actions that are gonna help you. And it allows that space for your brain to think. Okay, so question for you. What makes you feel really good, and I mean genuinely good, and how can you fit more of it into your routine? Okay, so that concludes my tips for today. The main point I want to get across is focus on feeling good, not the outcome. When you focus on feeling good about who you are, about what you're doing, you're going to build up self-esteem and therefore things are naturally going to flow a lot better rather than constant struggle or low self-esteem. You've got to feel good now. And I've learned this, this lesson, which is so valuable. Just work on doing things that make you feel good as you are right now. And you want to work on that self-esteem because you're going to be you for the rest of your life. You might as well 
start feeling good about being you for the rest of your life. Just a quick video I'd like to reference, which isn't mine, and it is the six pillars of self-esteem that would be really good for you to check out. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's really about the six areas of self-esteem and how you can develop them. And it's a really, really good video. And it's, an, it's a Blinkist I've listened to, so I certainly recommend you check it out. A final resource before I go as well, is that if you go onto my website, johnnypardo.com, you can find a free resource at the moment, a free guide, which is about 10 pages long, where I give some more self-esteem tips in addition to what I've talked about today that can help if you're particularly struggling with self-comparisons or approval from others, because I, that, those are areas I really struggle with. So if you think you're one of, you're one of the people who really struggle with those, then you can find a guide for that on my website as well at the moment. So I hope you've enjoyed today. If you want to find out more about me or any more of my resources, go onto my website, as I've just said, johnnypardo.com, or you can contact me on social media, just type in Johnny Pardo into Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. I'm also on Amazon where you can find my books, type in Johnny Pardo again. Of course, I'm on YouTube and I'm on multiple podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple and Anchor. Just type in Johnny Pardo into any of them. Keep working on that self-esteem muscle and I'll speak to you in the next talk.